Oh man, remember when you got your first DSLR, popped the lens on for the first time, watched the Peter McKinnon video, and you went out and shot your very first sequence and it looked like this? Yeah, that's not exactly how it went for me either. Chances are it probably looked closer to this. Or even worse, this. Like almost everything in photo video, things are never as simple as they seem to be. I remember when I was first starting out, I was staring at people's footage just like, how? How are you doing that? Like there was some secret club I wasn't invited to. It felt like there had to have been just a setting on my camera, or a button to press, or just something going on. My footage never looked as good as some of the other people's on YouTube. Now there's actually a bajillion different ways to improve your footage to make it look more cinematic, more smooth, more beautiful. Today we're just talking about one budget friendly thing that's going to help your footage out, and that's ND filters. If you've ever even heard of an ND filter, chances are you've heard of the phrase ND filters are like sunglasses for your lens. And that's 100% right. Simply put, all an ND filter is is a dark piece of glass that actually prevents light, or at least as much light, from entering your camera. Now that's kind of interesting because normally the challenge with photography and video is getting enough light. You almost always want as much light as possible so you can shoot at ISO 100 and get a super clean image. So why would you want to let less light in? Well, there's a couple reasons. For photography, a big reason is if you want to do long exposures, so leave that shutter open, blur things out like cars or water or something like that. But for video, it's a little bit different. So there's a golden rule when shooting video, and that's the 180 degree shutter rule, which simply means your shutter speed should always be double your frame rate. If you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want a shutter speed of roughly 1 over 50. If you're shooting at 30 frames per second, 1 over 60. If you're shooting 60 frames per second, you want 1 over 125. Ideally, this would just be exactly double, but most of the time with a DSLR, you don't have those options, so you just pick the closest one. Now the reason this is a rule is when you have a shutter speed that's double your frame rate, it's going to give you the most realistic motion blur in your footage. It's going to be super natural looking, it's going to be close to what the human eye perceives in real life. Okay, so this is correct motion blur. The object blurs as it moves, like things do. And now my shutter speed is just cranked and this looks totally unnatural. But here's the problem, if you're trying to shoot outside or anywhere where it's super bright and you're trying to go to f1.8, f1.4, maybe even f1.2, the laws of physics are going to throw out your plans like yesterday's garbage. For instance, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you can't have a shutter speed of 1 over 50 and like an f1.4, that's just not possible. So without an ND filter, there are two options, you can stop down and shoot at like f16, uh, that doesn't look very cinematic, there's not much depth of field. Or you can just crank that shutter speed and hope no one is going to notice that motion blur. But the problem is, everyone is going to notice that motion blur. Even if they don't know why your footage is off, it is very obvious that there is something wonky going on. Thankfully, there's a solution, and that's where ND filters come into play. So find an ND filter that's going to fit on the front of your lens. Lenses have different diameters, so just make sure it's going to fit yours. Screw it on, adjust your settings, and you're going to have more professional, cinematic looking footage very quickly. And with that variable filter, you can actually twist it. It'll do some polarizing magic and adjust how much light is hitting your camera's sensor. Now, anyone familiar with a camera knows there's only three things you can do to adjust the exposure. Aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. But since video essentially locks off that shutter speed with the 180 degree rule, we're introducing a fourth variable called the ND filter, which kind of counterbalances that. It's another way to adjust exposure. I'll leave the particular filter I use down below. I actually don't love it. It's pretty cheap. It gives your footage a little bit of a green tint, but for the price, it gets the job done. Filters can get really expensive, anywhere from $50, $100, I've seen some even well over $200, so maybe start with a cheaper one unless you've got a lot of money burning a hole in your pocket, but even a cheap one is going to help your footage out. 
As always, my name is Josh Winiarski. Hopefully this video helped you out. Have fun, stay creative, and I'll see you all in the next one.